Good afternoon, good evening, good dawn, good whatever, wherever you find yourself. Welcome to another episode of the Power Series, which yours truly is Amala Dranyi. Well, it's another Sunday, and as always, we like to have fun with the Power Platform stuff. In today's episode, we're going to learn how to build a Power Up with Power BI, all in one session. Well, when we come back, I'm going to give you all the details and all the fun stuff what we're going to do. So, before, let's go for the intro. We're back, we're back, we're back, we're back, we're back again. Welcome to the show. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about building power ups and power BI all in one session. As always, you know, before we get started, I like to talk about stuff happening in the community, stuff you should look out for, you know, talk about cool stuff I think you should check out. So let's just get right into it. So, first on the list, if you missed last Saturday's session, that was just yesterday, man, you are missing awesome, awesome stuff in the MCT West Africa Cloud Bootcamp. 2020 it's still ongoing yesterday was was day two or saturday two we're running it for the next six saturdays so if you missed it join us next week saturday for two tracks and i'll be presenting next week i'll be doing some iot and power you know power platform stuff so make sure you join us um let me share the website for you to go register very simple so check that out if you haven't i urge you to go register right now and be part of this awesome event yep with that out of the way let's talk about the next thing yes ignite 24 25th of this month and guess who is speaking in the community session it's yes yours truly i'm there uh talking about meeting the power platform community in the me region i'll be there if you're also having registered again let me give you the link to register for my ignite it's not too late sign up and get your sessions all prepared and it's going to be awesome 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 fun and finally if you're right here in ghana yes niit which is one of the prestigious you know technology institutions which i am an, an aluminous of is doing a session for you to learn how to become a full stack developer it's like an open session to have a discussion ask questions you know meet industry experts so the fair the first one happened last friday the second one is going to happen this coming friday don't miss it that's the link fill the form and join them and have some fun well yes with all that out of the way i can gladly close this i can gladly close this and i can actually gladly close this as well let's just get into the meat of today's session but we have an awesome awesome person who is going to take us through this awesome and interesting session well as you know let me bring my drum roll 
Let's with a round of applause. Let's welcome Belinda. Belinda, you are live. Hi, Samuel. Hello. You have a lot. You have a lot going on. I didn't know you were going to speak at it night. That's so stinking <laughs> awesome. I love yes. it. Yes. <laughs> yes. I'm speaking at Ignite. I know it's just, you know, it's just, I, I, I mean, Donna always tell you, someone loves, you know, to do it, you know. I like to be volunteered, so just jumping from, you know, uh, event to event. It's just good to, you know, share the knowledge, you know, learn, speak to, you know, speak to people. Because people are looking up, they want to learn, they want to do stuff. So for me, every opportunity I get, I take it. So, I mean, and that's why you're also here, you know, you're also sharing the community. So yeah. we're yeah. really awesome and proud to have you. <laughs> Thank you. And I'm excited that you're doing job fair. So did you watch Donna Sakar's keynote Keynotes, for yes. the Dynamics Con last week? Yes. Wow, I was astounded yeah. at the number of jobs that, yeah. that are available. Yeah. And boy, Power BI and the whole Power Platform are really big areas that a lot of people are mm -hmm. looking at. And so I think that's that's pretty fascinating. I love numbers. So yeah, it's, that's actually why it's a, we we try to bring people like you on the show, you know, to help people understand the importance of learning this platform. Because there are tons and tons of jobs, you know, out there. So far as you make up your mind that you want to learn this, you can do this. Hey, grab this, and you know, you know the next job is available for you to pick. So that's why we're having you on the show to show us how it's okay. done, to motivate us to learn and you know to do it. So I, I think, you know, yeah. the first part to be, I mean, telling us about yourself, you know, who is that? Who okay. is Belinda? How did you get into who technology? So, <laughs> All that fun yeah, stuff. So I've, been, I've been in technology a long time. I go back to DOS days. Mm. So that's when I started working in technology and I started implementing and supporting Great Plains, which is now known as Dyna Microsoft Dynamics GP. And so I've been around a long time. So I was there during the transition to Windows, which was very interesting. And uh, I've always been someone who's been a reporting nut. So Crystal Reports was like mm -hmm. one of the first cool report writing yeah. tools I could into. <laughs> I, I remember those Crystal. days. <laughs> yeah, it was. it's a cool mm -hmm. product. I really yeah. liked it a lot. And eventually I moved from Lotus 123 to Excel. And so what made me move was I remember when the first time that I uh, took one single column and uh, split it among mm -hmm. multiple columns, that was not something that was easily achievable in Lotus, Lotus way yeah. back when. But when I did it in just seconds in Excel, I'm like, oh, that's it. I'm an Excel <laughs> nut now. And so I started working in Excel. And so then I was around when like Power Pivot came out mm -hmm. and Vue came out yeah. and I jumped on those just like, you know, mm. and so I just got involved in that. And then Microsoft said, hey, you know, um, we we want you to help us be part of our Power BI team. And at that point, I was already a an MVP for Microsoft Dynamics mm. GP. And so eventually uh, Microsoft just said their choice. Hey, Belinda, you are now um, <laughs> pure BI. <laughs> And so I'm like, okay. And so then they spent a little while. They're trying mm. to work me from GP to BC. Mm. Um, and so I, I'm slowly learning BC. Some of the examples I'm going to show you today are B GP specific, but that's just because I know the database very well. Mm. And I'm still filling my way around with, you know, MVPs are so helpful. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, when you have an issue, <laughs> I mean, you could reach, we reach out to each other and, um, I always joke I have the best contact list in the planet, the planet. you know, yeah. because yeah. It, it's just awesome. And so I'm, I'm getting help from various MVPs on, on getting my data set, my mm. back end becoming BC, which is very different be, with it being all SAS. Yeah. So, but it's easier, but it's still very different. And, you know, GP, I know the database like yeah. that, but I'm <laughs> I'm trying to get there on BC. We'll, we'll see. And uh, some, uh, I have a lot of really great friends and MVPs who are helping me move mm. along, like Steve Indo. I don't know if you know Steve Indo, but he yep. is so worth yep. knowing. Yep. Yeah. And um, and some new MVPs like Kristen Hossman and Shannon Mullins are some new ones. They've yeah, been well, helping yeah. me along too. So, um, 
very helpful, very helpful uh, part of the community. And things like this just make it better and better because we just, you know, you, you could, I could, it's a full-time job to learn. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but that's a, that's yeah. a little bit about me. So we started our business in South Carolina. We're on the East coast okay. of the United States and uh, South Carolina is not very big. So my husband and I had our own VAR practice and we decided that, um, we needed more opportunity because it's a pretty small community. So we sold our business and moved to New York City. And we stayed in New York City for a very long time. Mm. And we just, um, he quasi retired and we moved back to South Carolina. We merged our business with another partner, um, okay. a really great one that is a hosting partner in Jeopardy. Mm. They're a great GP hosting partner. And they've got some really cool SaaS tools which enabled me to like build some app source apps. So do some oh. things like that. That was a lot of fun. And then for Power BI. And then um, and then Belinda's just got to be Belinda. So I just came back out and now I'm just doing training. So I'm doing things that are fun to me. But My yeah. husband's programming, but he's doing, you know, whatever interests him. <laughs> and so we're, we're kind of retired now. Yeah. Back to living in South Carolina yeah. on the coast. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'm... I've, um, this year has been so weird, hasn't it? It, I it mean, has, it has. Yeah. With all this COVID, with all, you know, you know, it's, it's, it's been a very weird year. You know, it has the good, the bad, the ugly. Um, but through it all, uh, there are a lot of positives. There are a lot of rethinking. There's a lot of, you know, reimagining of oneself and the potential, mm -hmm. you know, of tools and technology and even community, family, family and loved ones. Like everything has been reimagined. You know, people that, you know, pre, you know, pre-COVID were not, you know, really keen on family are realizing that, look, family is a huge thing. People that were yes. not keen on technology are realizing that, look, technology is a huge thing. So, you know, through it all, it's, it's thrown us some things, you know, to be, you know, to be thankful for. Yeah. That's true. That's very true. And I have been busier than ever. And mm. it makes me feel kind of guilty for the people who have not been so lucky, but um, I've been busier than ever. And so, um, yeah, very weird time. But because of that, there's a lot of numbers that I could calculate in Power BI. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, the... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, the, the, the COVID numbers are just yeah. the, um, the tip of the iceberg, but I've been like running my own, um, my own numbers and my own yeah. reports and comparing for counties that family live in, mm. how they're doing and kind of living and breathing by those numbers. And then uh, for those of you who are not in the U.S., yes, we have a zoo of political stuff going on. So um, looking at poll numbers and things like that as well have been quite yeah. interesting. So, um, yeah, so there's a, a lot of weirdness going on, but a lot of a lot of data that we could process to try to help figure out how to calm the weirdness down. Yeah. But that kind of brings me to where I am today. It's something that I am super passionate about. Mm -hmm. When it comes to uh, to Power BI specifically, my most passionate project is financial statements. But when it comes to the Power platform, I'm all about taking those chunks of work that cost businesses money and making those processes easier and making them less expensive because i always think of like an ap department if you could save expenses in a way you're adding to the bottom line revenue and so power at power the power platform just it, it there's you're only limited by your imagination yeah. on what yeah. you can do and i haven't even played with the virtual agent very much <laughs> i i may I made a fatal mistake, Samuel, and you'll, you'll <laughs> laugh at this because the first time I'm like, oh, I'm going to go in and mm. instead of doing something simple with those mm. bots, mm. I decide I'm going to go in and have it read to me SQL data. And, you know, <laughs> not that that's, you know, impossible. It's mm -hmm. not, but it's not easy to do it, your yeah, first time around. Yeah, yeah. And so, I mean, what an idiot. So, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, don't do that your first time around. Mm -hmm. You don't need that. You don't need mm -hmm. to play with the bot in SQL, you know, play with you something yeah, like yep, a website yep, or something, yep. something with um, with much less going on to it in security. But yeah. yeah, that's the way Belinda rolls. So she just kind of dives into the deep end of the pool on a regular basis. And so, um, but that's where, that's where I am today. And 
Power Automate, Power Apps, and of course, Power BI can offer you a lot of those opportunities. So um, that's that's one of the things that I'm about today is if you could save, you know, a, a couple hours a week, you mm. are saving the business money. Yeah. If you can, um, I mean, because then you're freeing up resources that could be used for better things, right? Yep. The dollar in resources. Um, in the case of accounts receivable, you know, um, in the U.S., our, our uh, general accepted accounting principles, they have you take 5%. You can adjust up to 5% as a potential um, mm. uh, potential bad debt each debt, year. Yeah. And if you think about that, if you have $10,000 of accounts receivable, then that 5% is $500. And people have so much more than $10,000 in accounts receivable. So if they have $100,000 in a year, that's $5,000. And if you could improve the quality yeah. of, or it, you try to avoid writing that off, then you have basically have saved the cost of licenses. And now you have licenses yeah. free to do other things that that um, that are also really out there. So when it comes to things like operational things, I'm all about the really small apps, the really small wins, because that's where you get a lot of big victories. So that's that's kind of what when it, some of the stuff that I'm I'm really into interested in in enhancing with 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 the whole Power Apps family. Yeah. So and again, I'm going to get the bots in there too. Yeah. So you want to dive in and take a look? Yes, let's get the fun started. Actually, John, John says, "What's up, Miss Belinda?" I'm just giving you what's up from Twitch. Oh, okay. <laughs> Is that John Levesque? Yes. Ah, yes. Hi, uh, yeah, I adore him. So he is, <laughs> but he's part of the craziness in the United oh, yes. States. You I know mean... you are, John. You know it. <laughs> I just, I just, I just love the energy. There's, there's one thing about the power, the power community that, you know, the energy is so, it's like, it's so, like, it, it's so contagious. It's, it's crazy. Like the whole you know, power community just all like descend on you. You need help. You can always get help. Like different people. It's, it's, it's just amazing. He is, he's part of what I'm talking about on my good Rolodex file. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. And, um, and so here, let me go ahead and just share my screen. And then one of the things that I really kind of got excited about, let me switch from that one to another one. And I'm going to show you how this one works. But one of the things I kind of got really excited about, and, and John will love this, is I started thinking, and I'm working on this with, with BC, how can you take someone's invoice um, that you're sending them, a customer's invoice, and maybe a week before it's due, you send them an email uh, through Power Automate, a flow email with options. Hey, this invoice is coming up due in, in seven days. So what, do you need another copy of it? Um, do you want bank information so you could wire us the money? Or have you already sent a payment? And so if you could send like an option like that, yeah. then what a great way to nudge. And especially if you don't have to be part of the nudging. Exactly. Right? Exactly. So I, mean, I, it, I it's just it's just amazing. I mean, just even looking at this is Power BI. And I see there's an yes. there's power ups embedded in it. Yes. So best of both worlds. Well, I, I, I don't even yes. know I, I don't even know what to say now. <laughs> Yeah, it, this is, this is. So what we're looking at in the case of Dynamics GP, and this is very likely the case in mm. a lot of accounting systems, people will enter in accounts payable invoices, they enter them in batches, somebody reviews the batch and approves it, and then they post it or commit it to the accounting system. So there's this whole process of how do you review batches and mm. how do you review the data in them? Because what you're really looking at is where it's going to be coded in the general ledger. And that's kind yeah. of what we're looking at right here. We have GL account numbers across the top of the page, and we could see the vendor information keyed in here and what kind of document it is and the account number and so forth. So, and you could, we've got filters. This is not that big a special of report. But I want to point out these four batches in GP, if I took one that had just two entries, it could be two pages long to print. Yeah. So what a, 
what a waste to print that out and then to have somebody look at these transactions one at a time, especially if I'm looking at insurance. So if I yeah. click on insurance here, I can look and see, oh, everything is getting coded to this account number. Mm -hmm. And I could go a little deeper and put the account number in mm -hmm. the name somewhere else. Yeah. I just didn't do that. But you could build out these reports pretty much any way that you want to build them. But I could see, I happen to know this is prepaid insurance. And if I look, I'm like, this is correct. These are all correct, which tells me that now that I've narrowed it down to just this insurance company, that these two batches um, are, you know, are the ones being accounted for. So if I came in and said, all right, just show me these two batches, it happens to only be, oops, let me do, select them both. It happens to only be this insurance company. So I could tell right now, I could probably go in and, and approve those two batches mm -hmm. without having any problems. So let me do a little switcheroo on you over here. So here is, well, not really switcheroo. Here is GP. Let me close that window out. Okay. So this are my GP bashes. And it doesn't matter that I'm using GP. Mm. It could be anything. But, you know, this is just one of the many Microsoft products for the ERP system. And so I'm going to go ahead and just minimize that. Oh, and I should have shown you. Let me pull that back up. Had a couple extra windows open here. These are all unapproved. The status okay. is unapproved. Yeah. yeah. So I have this little, this is a power ah. app right here. Mm. And I built this power app with a phone form factor. So it's okay. meant to be size. Belinda, are you there? Looks like something went wrong. Well, let's see. Whilst we wait for Belinda join, let's see. Yeah, so I was just, you know, reading into the chat and, you know, John is saying, if, if you really have followed Belinda on most of the things she's done. Oh, yeah, we're back. <laughs> and now if I come back in and refresh my Power BI report, and I, pr I probably should do that with Flow, but like I said, I'm trying to switch it up. Um, oh, let me clear the filter there. So the insurance batch is now gone, and the insurance batch is gone here. Mm -hmm. And if I go into GP now, and I'm just going to refresh this, you can see this batch is approved. approved yeah. And if I double-click on it, I see my updated uh, oh, text from my yeah. description. Hi, Samuel and John. Yeah. And so the cool thing about this, is there's so many cool things. The person who has to review this batch doesn't have to go through mounds and mounds of paper. They could use the great interactive mm. experience inside of Power BI yep. to do a much significantly shorter review and probably do a better job at it. So that not only are they saving time, but they're doing a better job at what they're looking at. Then they don't have to switch around to go anywhere. They could just highlight the batch and then click I'll on approve. approve. Yeah. And it's going to go back in and approve the batch in the appropriate place. So it's possible that this person doesn't even have to have a license. Yep. Right? Yep. Except yep. for Power BI and Power Apps. Apps. So, yeah. I mean, there are maybe there's this in this particular case, there would be a SQL license involved, but involved, not a yeah. GP license. A GP, so, yeah. yeah. Um, that's you know, the fact that you could do things like that are just tremendous, right? And then you get it done quickly. Now, what you didn't see happening in the background, if I pull up, here is an email that I got. And if I select oh. this, an email went out to the fake accounting department, mm -hmm. the AP department, that tells me that that batch has been approved. And then here's the batch, um, the batch comment, yeah. and it's updated. Hi, Samuel and John. So... All of that was done in the background. So no, now AP knows that that batch has been approved and they can go through and post it and do whatever they need to you do with do, it yeah. and, and make it go. I mean, that kind of functionality is tremendous. Some power automate happening in the background. Right, right. <laughs> so it's in this button. So if we were to mm. come in and go to open this up, here is our app that we were just looking at. And 
quite frankly, this app, and I'm familiar enough with it to know, most GP users that do batch approval, they probably spend more than two hours a week approving mm. batches. So that's pretty significant amount of time saving. Two hours a week, mm. I mean, that's a lot. Okay, so here's the batch. Now, one of the things in SQL is there's a couple of caveats. Delegation, for example, isn't really there, but in the case of GP for this batch thing, there's usually never, it would be highly unusual for someone to have more than a thousand uh, mm -hmm. batches but, yeah. unapproved at one time. It would be highly unusual. So I'm not worried about delegation when it comes to that because handling it with a thousand or less batches should be perfectly fine. Besides that, I have the batches narrowed down to just being the payable batches. So if I come in here and open this up, what we're going to see, first of all, um, it is taking and sending or running a flow. The flow is called GP AP batch approval. I'll open that up in a minute. And it's sending the flow to mm. parameters, the okay. batch number batch or the name. batch ID and the updated batch comment. Mm. So two things are happening there. And then it, after that, it has a function where it is patch, uh, running a patch command, which yeah. is an update command update, that... Yeah. Um, you would use if you were using SQL. SQL. So I'm telling it to update this table. And I, I want to be kind of clear about writing directly to a production SQL database because I, if you ask me if you should do that and I could only answer yes or no, I would <laughs> say no. No. <laughs> but, why no? Because well, I'm gonna, I mean, we're going to be curious. Well, I it, it depends upon, the, you know, who's doing the work. <laughs> right, and I am citizen developer, so uh, I um, I even have my little citizen developer keychain yeah. right here. So um, yeah, so so typically, if I had to answer just a yes no answer, it would probably be no. Okay. But if you know the database and you know, like you have something like this example, where the approval is just three fields in a single table. And actually, it's really just one field. It's this Boolean field right here called approval, that one right there. And I'm changing the Boolean from zero unapproved to one approved. And so I know that if I just, and I, I could get away without using the approval user ID or the approval date. And I'll talk about the user ID in just a moment. But I know that if I change that approval from zero to one in that one table, it will not cause any effect anywhere else except that that batch can now be posted. That's the mm. only thing it's going to do. And that's because I know the database and I okay. understand the effect of changing that single field. And so you really need to work with someone who knows the database if you don't know the database, database because you don't yeah. want to be able to go in and just change anything. Yeah. And so that's why if I had to say yes or no, I would say no. But if you understand the database or you're working with someone who does, then by all means, I think it's cool. Uh, if you have something that has, uh, in the case of ERP software, if you have something that maintains business rules, a stored mm -hmm. procedure that maintains business rules, mm -hmm. I'm okay with that as well because you are not going to break anything if you're using something that enforces the business rules that are in place. So I'm okay with that. Now here I did use SA. What mm. I would typically do is um, either um, use, in the case of GP, Dyn SA versus SA, but in the batch comment or somewhere else, I would make a notation that this batch was approved by whatever the name of the user is okay, so that yeah. you still have access to it somewhere. And it's not just, you're just not blankly using SA. Mm. The use of SA here is just the user ID. It doesn't give away any passwords or anything. So it's not going to break anything or do anything. You know, if you're not happy with it, we could put DynSA. But um, I don't, I just am keeping it nice and simple SA for this right now. And then I have the date that it was approved and I just automatically have a default to today. today. You notice yeah. it didn't ask me for that anywhere. And then I am updating the batch comment. So the batch comment, is this field right here. Okay, below So it. I have this batch coming. When I select, this is a gallery. When I select one of my gallery items, 
whichever one it is, let me come in, whatever the comment that's already in my accounting system for that batch, it automatically puts it in here and I can change it if I choose to. So that's one thing. So like I have SQL Saturday rocks, mm -hmm. I could. Okay, I'm gonna show my ignorance. Spell Ghana for me. G H A N A. Yep. That's how I would have spelled it. <laughs> so let's do Ghana rocks. Okay. So I'm not really making any kind of drastic changes when I do that, and then now I'm approving this one. But I'm just changing that one field in field, that yeah. batch comment, and because I understand that when I'm in GP, and mm. I don't know which one I did. I think it was utilities. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This, everything on this screen is in that one table. Yeah. So I'm just changing this. I'm just changing that. I'm just changing this and I'm just changing this. That, okay. And so that's all I'm really doing. If I changed the batched ID name, I would be monkeying around with the system mm. and I would end up being in quite a mess. Quite, and that's yeah. something I definitely don't want to do. So that's how I have that. And then one of the things that I found real important when I did this is that I trim the ends off on this mm, and we'll yeah. go through and build this in, uh, out in just a few moments, but I trim the ends off of it because sometimes I find SQL will fill in spaces. And so if you happen to have a batch with no space, uh, with nothing in the description, mm. then if you came down here and started typing, it would start somewhere in the middle because you'd have some yeah. blank spaces. Blank, yeah. Yeah. So I go ahead and just trim that. It doesn't hurt anything at all. So this is my little app. And just to show you uh, the other area I was working on, I'm gonna go back into GP for just a moment. So forgive me, you don't have to know GP <laughs> to know understand what I'm doing. So I'm gonna come in here and um, let me arrange my screens. Okay, so let me let me delete this. Oh, let me come in and just delete that. Okay. So I have a customer here. So this is the, the next thing that I was working on. So let's say that I wanted to um, create a process for a new customer. So if someone came into GP and entered a customer, so they're goofy. And I'm, would, at this point, I would say all new customers, I'd have it automatically set up so that they always get entered in on hold and you can't change that. Change but then that, I would yeah. say, Goofy, Alan is my dog and I'm going to, well, was my dog. I'm going to make him my my um, my uh, customer here. So I'm going to go <laughs> ahead and just add him as my customer. Now, one of the things that we could have it do is when somebody adds it in some someone in as a customer, because maybe they're keying in a quote, then at that point, I have it set up where the sales manager, you can see that just happened, up in the entered app. in and in uh, gets an email automatically telling yeah. me that the new customer has been added. Please approve and run a credit a limit, limit check. check. Okay. And so this is what I was working on earlier. <laughs> And it didn't work out for me. <laughs> not yet. I'm getting there. I'm not going to um, try to run it, but I'll at least show you some of the idea. So let me open up this one. And I probably should have just ran it instead of opening it. I get in the habit of doing that. Okay. So on okay. the app, hmm. here, here he is, because he's automatically oh, listed okay. as a customer on hold. Oh. And this is... Hmm. This is, I, I love the fact that we can create images as well. And so these are only yeah. customers that are on hold. So I could see they have the little hold sign listed right there. So when I go in, I could go through the checklist. So I mm -hmm. could say, all right, um, I did a credit check yeah. from wherever I'm going to do it. Here's today's date. And um, may uh, for some reason, it looks like he was already set with a credit limit like that. And mm -hmm. then I would want to change the credit limit. And this is not going to update my GP just yet, but I'm going to go ahead and select that. It takes me back here. It'll refresh it. That's why it's that didn't work out. But yeah. what that checklist is, is, is here he is. Oh, this point. is okay. a, a SharePoint list. 
where I could add whatever I want to the checklist and I can make my notations accordingly. Mm -hmm. So whoop, edit, there we go. So I could see there was the, mm -hmm. the customer ID, which came from my GP. And that's mm -hmm. probably why I had a problem with it. There's yeah, some spaces, all the spaces right there. Yeah. yeah. And then there's the customer name, because that's actually what I was linking on. So that's probably where my issue was occurring. Here's my credit limit. And then I could add a new credit limit if I want to. But the fact that now they're off hold, um, they would be off hold, then it's something that we can continue to process on. Yeah. And the reason why that I did it like um, this was because I also wanted to be able to check out what was going on with anybody who was on hold for another reason because my thought yeah. process was so like these are customers on hold is that i could also come in and uh create a list of let's come in here and i could see all right of all the customers that are on hold i could come in and see what is the available credit, credit. I could see their balance and then let me get the customer name and make it in the access. Mm. So in this case, I'm only seeing available credit because and no balances oh, okay. for yeah. these particular customers because those are new. But if I go back, I could look and see um, oh, those are just okay. like newer yeah. customers. So I could, I can narrow it down and take a look at, at one of these and see, you know, what's going on and monitor it that way. So not only can I go through and and look at um, what some of the available things are, I could also come in, let me get rid of these, and let me go and see what they have on order. So I could go in and get the order amount and populate that. So here they are, are the orders and information by customer. And actually, I'm going to come in and change this to a, hmm, I'll leave it like that. Okay, oh, no, I want to change it to a stack. And then I also want to get the thought type and put that in my legend. So now I can see, you know, these. this is all orders that they okay. have. So the ones that are orange are ones I probably want to pay a little bit closer attention to because they have orders. And mm. I might want to find out, like especially this one that's got 43000 almost $44,000 worth of order. I probably want to figure out, hey, what in the heck, um, you know, what is their credit limit? What is their current balance? I probably want to know their current balance. So let me come in here and um, put in current balance. And I would want to keep adding to this. Okay, so in this case, if I click here, their current balance is 68,000 and here is $44,000 worth of credit. So yeah. they're getting close to the edge. We can't process all those orders. So I probably need to pick up the phone and talk to them and, and let them know that their other orders cannot be issued until we get the rest of the credit right, because yeah. we don't want to lose out on that much money. And so by doing so, I'm hoping to take advantage of being able to use the app to help me do certain things like this. So maybe notify uh, mm. an app or, or flow, maybe notify the customer right away. Yeah. Notify the salesperson right away. Um, process all this information accordingly so that it's all done a lot more automated than it is um, personally. Personal manual, so, yeah. 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 Because one of the things that we could definitely do, even if this, if, well, particularly if this is in the Power BI service, because I could take my uh, available credit, which would be the credit limit minus the balance, and I could bring in what's on order and see if it's negative or positive. And anybody who's negative, they're going to hit my alert button, and, and mm -hmm. I could use the alert feature inside of the Power BI service to trigger all kinds of flow work. So I could set wheels in motion without even having to think about it. About it you know, yeah. yeah, if I'm coming in late because I have a dentist appointment and um, it doesn't matter that I'm coming in late because if, if everything is set to go off that morning, then it's going to go off whether I'm in the office or not. And I don't know why I can't, there we go. <laughs> and um, I don't, I don't have to worry about that. So those kinds of things are, I, I'm seeing so much more use for it. Again, it's just yeah. a matter of getting the ideas out in your head. 
So you want me, you want to see me build how, yeah. uh, how I built this? Okay, yep. so I'm going to close this one out. Let me leave there and leave here. All right, so we're going to build out a brand new app. So I'm going to come in, I'll start from the home tab. And I'm going to do a Canvas app from blank. And so I'm going to call this one Samuel. KP. And I'm going to, here's where I'm choosing my phone size. Fine, so I'm going to yep. go ahead and choose phone. And I I really love the whole form, phone form factor if you're going to put it on a, on mm. a Power BI report. report Otherwise, yeah. I am a big fan of the tablet size. And of course, you could just make another page of Power BI. It doesn't have to be that small if you really want to make it bigger or mm -hmm. maybe... Um, you have a, a grandma like me who has glasses and has to like squint a lot. So um, you might want to put it on a yeah. separate page too. Okay, so here's my phone form factor. And one thing that a lot of people don't realize is on the screen name, you really want to take the time to name it right because if somebody is visually impaired and they're having their computer read the screen to them, it will read out whatever you have the screen name here. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to use something like, um, you know, uh, all, eight, all, all one word AP batch, right? So yep. um, we want to have like um, unapproved. Oops. So you want that to be completely spelled out like that because it's going to be read. And what I want to do is I, I love the reusable components. And so one of the things that I like to do a lot when I'm needing a reusable component, so I'll come in and do an insert and I'll go to custom and I'll just import it from another app. Mm -hmm. So I can yeah. go to my AP batch approval app and import, and it's gonna find my header. There it is, all built yeah. out, so I don't have to rebuild that. You'll build that again. And so now I could come in and insert my header. So there's my header, and I have it built, so I could come in and just rename it, and we'll call this, un whoops, Unposted AP batches. Because there's like six ways to do everything, sometimes you'll see me change. <laughs> yeah, <there. I> think... <laughs> sometimes you'll see me, you know, if I can click in here, and then sometimes I'm over in the pane on the right. And I am a big fan. I'm not going to do this for now, but you do want to rename everything. Yep. In this case, there is only um, one header. So we don't need to do anything else. And then Probably the most commonly used component is the gallery. So when you insert, yeah. I'm choosing gallery and I'm gonna grab a gallery. And one of the things I love about the gallery is that you can make it look kind of any way you want. It doesn't mm -hmm. have to look like the traditional gallery. Yeah. You notice mine kind of looked a little bit different. And mm -hmm. one of the reasons mine looked different is because the first thing I did is like, I don't, I don't need this little <laughs> arrow. Yeah. Uh, so I get rid of the arrow. I'm going to come in and change this so it's just over here on the right where it's mm -hmm. just the field. Um, subtitle or Titles actually just okay. titles all I need because I only need the batch name. That's all I need. And so I just have my title right here. Now I've got my gallery there. Let me come in and get my data. So I'm going to come over to this a data icon so I could see the data in my pane here. And I'm getting my data from SQL Server. So I'm going to go into SQL Server and select my SQL Server connection. Mm -hmm. I have my gateway running. You could probably see that listed right yeah, here. Oops. Down there. <laughs> there <it is. laughs> yeah. Here's my gateway. Okay. So I'm going to find the table that contains the batch information. And here it is. So that's the table that I want. Again, you need to know what you're looking for. All right. So I'm going to come back into my tree view. And then now I'm going to change my data source on the gallery to be that particular table. And now it just automatically pulled up the first option, but I'm going to change this so that it is the batch number, which is actually mm. the name of the batch. The name of, yeah. So now I can actually see the name of the batch. Now I'm going to come up and bring that up here. My goes back. Okay, I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna shrink this up a little bit. It doesn't really need to be that big. Another thing that I like to do, uh, well, a couple things I like to do on my gallery, I like to put a little border around it. So I'm gonna quickly put a border around it. And then I also like to come in, I'm gonna click right here. So I'm in an individual card on the gallery. I like to come in and add 
uh, rectangle. This is how I get that color in the background. And then I'll stretch my rectangle out for the whole card. Now I know you can't see it, but you can come over here and go to reorder and send it to the back. And then now I can alter how I want the color to be. Yeah, so on the okay. rectangle, I'm gonna come over to fill and I'm gonna do an if statement. I don't want it to automatically be this color. So on the if statement, I'm gonna say if, and you should always tab and select the option from down below. So let me mm -hmm. do that again. If, there it is, or okay. click on it so that you get the right case and everything. And then IntelliSense <laughs> will tell you what to do. I <laughs> love IntelliSense. Yeah. Um, citizen developers like me, unlike you, Samuel, a pro developer, <laughs> love IntelliSense. Yeah. yeah. So now I'm going to come in. It's saying, hey, what's your logical test? So I'm going to say um, if uh, this item dot, and then I'm going to choose is selected, I mean, I've highlighted and clicked on yeah. it. Then I want it to be like light blue. And otherwise, at comma, I want it to be white. And now I can tell which one I have selected. selected and if I yeah. come up here, because it's light blue. Yeah. So that's one of the things that I like to do. Okay, so now I have, uh, I have all my batches listed. I only want to get the unapproved batches. Mm -hmm. So on the items here, I have my gallery selected. And mm -hmm. for the function for my items, it's just pulling out my SQL table. Yeah. Well, I want to get specific. I want to filter mm -hmm. that. Yeah. So I'm going to put in filter. There we go. Filter. And then I always put a little space so I don't start typing over it. So now yeah. I'm going to filter my source. So I'll put a comma and it's saying, okay, what's your logical test for your yes, filter? Yeah. Well, the logical test for my filter is going to be that it's not approved and it comes from payables. Yeah. So I know if it comes from payables, the batch source will always start with PM. Mm. So I'll do the starts with first. So I'll say starts with. Okay. And then I'm going to get my batch source. You have to know your fields. And then in double quotes, I'll put in PM. PM. So I know okay. I'm only getting the ones that start with payables. And then yeah. I only want the ones um, where the approval is zero. Oh, okay. A Boolean zero. And then ending parentheses. And then now I'm down to just those two batches. Those two. And okay. let me yeah. go back into payables real fast and at least turn one more back on. So I'm going to come in. I'll get the insurance. I will okay. unapprove that. All right, just so we could see it. That'll probably be our last time in GP. Did I get approve it? Yeah, okay. So that's good enough for right now. So when I go back in, it'll it'll catch back up to me. All right. So there are my batches. And so if I want to approve one, what I need to do is just add a button that does the patch. Up, so yeah. I'm, I'm gonna add a button and on my button, I'm going to change the on select to be that patch statement. Mm. So I'll say patch, and now it's looking for the source. So I'm not going to go ahead and select my source right away because I need to tell it, um, well, yeah, I will. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> now I need to tell it what record I want. Yeah. And I'm going to find the unique identifier for that batch row, which is mm, in the case of selected. it's called index row ID. It's just an index. Yeah. So I'm going to say, actually, I want to get the first record where it matches. And then I'm going to do a filter. Now, I know this sounds a little crazy to me. <laughs> yeah, It's got to sound a little crazy to you, too, if you're not used to it. So I'm going to filter that source so that the DEX row ID in that is equal to the selected DEX row ID in my gallery. Yeah. Mm. And then now I know I have it matched up. Matched, yeah. And so I'll put an ending parenthesis for the filter and an ending parenthesis for the first, first. Mm -hmm. comma. And then now a little bit of JSON goes a long way. We're going to enter in um, our payload, but we want to change in JSON. And so we'll start with the curly bracket and the JSON script will be added for us right away. So there's the approval field. I want to change that to one, comma. I also want to change the approval date. And I want it to be today. today. So I'm going to use that. And I'm not going to put any parameters in. So I'll just put a close print. And then the last thing that I want to do is 
the user ID. I'm okay. not going to do the okay. comment right now. And I want that to be the SA1. So end of my curly brackets and then a return. And so now um, I have this set so that if I were to, actually, let me put a refresh button on here as well. So I'm going to come in and just put a refresh button. We'll call this one refresh. And I wanted to refresh my the data, source. data yeah. set. Yeah. Okay. So now if I come back up and I refresh, I should see my third batch third come one. up. Yep. There we yeah, go. Yeah, there we go. All right. So I'm going to highlight this batch and I'm going to just click on this button, which is my update, and it should disappear again because I yeah. just updated that I wanted my GP. And that's how simple it yeah. could be. And if you want to do the flow thing, here's a Belinda tip on the flow. <laughs> I always add in, because Belinda thinks like a citizen developer, I always mm. add in a test button. Mm. And I usually make this button red, so it reminds me, hey, Belinda, you got to get rid of it. And that's actually <laughs> pretty of a red. So we'll use this one. Mm. And then now I'll come into action, and I'm mm. going to go in and launch my flow. And there okay. is the flow I created. Okay. And as it's connecting to this flow, there we go. It knows, hey, you had two parameters you were passing. Mm -hmm. One of them was, uh, we called it subject, and one we called body. The mm -hmm. one in the subject was the name of the batch. Mm -hmm. So I want to get the name of the batch. And so what I'm going to do is go select, um, um, get the gallery. Mm -hmm. Gallery one dot selected, selected. dot batch number. Mm -hmm. And then in parentheses. And that's oh, that's my no, first that's the one. the second one. Sorry, yeah. no in, mm -hmm. comma, and now it's looking for the second one, which was the comment. So mm -hmm. again, I'll go uh, gallery dot selected dot batch comment, and then in parentheses. Now, normally I would even put a trims width in there. Yeah, just to, to make sure. I get rid of those spaces. Okay, so I have that all done. Now, when I can run this without problems, then I go in and, and copy, copy this. this. <laughs> yeah. And then and I cut it, yeah. the top because you want to do this first. Yep. And just separate them by a semicolon. Mm. And now I have that all said and done. Mm. And I could come in and even put it the refresh again, the refresh command. Yeah. Right here, which is probably a smart thing to do. To do, yeah. So now I've got that done. So let me come back in to. Um, GP and unapprove this one. So I lied about that being the last time. All right, so we'll do a refresh. <laughs> refresh. Here. Then I'm not, then I'm not going to do yeah. the other buttons again. So now I'm going to do back. utilities again. Mm -hmm. Click on my button, and it is telling okay. Flow, hey, send this email. It's updating my uh, GP, and then it's putting the list in here. And if I were to come back over. I should uh, have okay. another email. There it is, yeah. telling me the utilities batch was just mm. approved. And so that's how easy it really is. And the flow piece inside of Power Automate just couldn't be easier. <laughs> it is one step oh. here. Oh, you have, uh, <laughs> oh, that's the wrong one. Hang on. I was like, that's not right. Uh, batch approval. There we go. Approval, yeah. Edit that one. It is one box here, nothing in it. Just, it's hey, amazing. when I'm in Power Apps and I tell it to run this one, that's when it gets triggered. Mm. And then the whole action is sending this email to um, to <laughs> yeah. my fake account. And then I have my subject, AP Batch, and that's mm. where I got the subject information. information. And then I just okay. populated it. Mm. And adding in these uh, dynamic codes or parameter codes is nothing but clicking on this add an expression. And if you want to add another one, you click on see more, mm. ask in power. Uh, and that's all you have to do. Now we'd be looking for a third expression. Third expression, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's how easy this is. I mean, it couldn't, this could not be a more simple task to build for any, mm. for uh, to be built. And this could literally save someone two to six hours a week if they have a lot yep. of 
payables transactions. And it didn't, I mean, basically I built it for us in 30 minutes or less. Mm. And so, I mean, that kind of time saver is just. Yeah, it's, it's I mean, it, it, it's amazing to see how, you know, right from, you know, just the data source, couple of buttons and, you know, a gallery and you have this working. So I think now the interesting part would be, how did you bring it into Power BI? Good question. And I'm in Power BI. I didn't know you were going to ask that. Okay, so I'm just going to populate one right in here. So there is a visual already set up, a Power BI visual. And if you, I'm in the desktop, and if you, you could also add it from the cloud. Yeah. So here is the Power BI visual. All I did was add it. Now, um, our, our development team at one point, <laughs> They, um, when we were in New York, they, they always told me I thought like a hacker. And um, so, <laughs> so this is how I get it rocking and rolling. So what I do is I come in. It doesn't matter what field you add. Mm. You would add a field to it. And, oh, my machine is probably, there we go. Mm. And then you get two options, um, either choose, to choose okay. an app that already exists or create a new one. Mm. And I'm gonna choose an app and I will choose, I'll just choose the appropriate one, the customer mm. and hold one. And then I'll say, add it. Mm. Then it's prompting me to share it. And that's what all that is. And that's how easy it is to add an app in here. And you could even do some, some things like on the buttons, have it automatically, when it's in the cloud, yeah. have it automatically refresh your data set inside yeah. of Power BI report as well. So there's a lot of different things that you could do like that that are pretty cool. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. I mean, again, time saver, money saver, lots to learn. I mean, it just opens up a lot of possibilities. And, you know, like you shared, you know, best practices, things to do and things not to do. What was your challenge? What was one of the challenges when you were building this? What kept you scratching your hair like, mm, how do I do this? <laughs> what was that thing? Um, I, for me, a couple of things that kind of that kind of got it for me, and the one that gets me the most frequently, and I have to pay attention whoops, to what I'm doing. I pulled the wrong thing up there. Is let me close this out. Is um, get rid of this. Get rid of that. No longer need it. The thing that gets me the most on a regular basis is getting the patch statement exactly right. <laughs> and that is that is for me. And, you know, a little bit of JSON goes a long way. And that's mm. really all this is. But the fact now that it kind of guides you with the yeah. field name being proper and with the um, colon right after it is very helpful. But that is the one thing that gets me the most. The other thing that kind of gets me, if I go back to that app, that I was playing with is also in dealing with forms. And mm. so, um, and, 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 and right, you know, thinking about your data set, you have to really understand what you're changing. If you're going to update a live production set, you, yeah. I'm recommending Im immensely do testing on it first. Don't, yeah. don't just go into it willy nilly. Yeah. So, um, oh, and I want to show this real fast too, but that was a good question that you asked there. On my gallery here, if I were to come in, because I, I do have this working where you could do uh, searches on it, but I'm going to come in and I'm going to tell it um, I do not want it filtered by hold. So I'm going to use that. Okay. okay, so that should, yeah, okay, now we've got everything. I wanted to show that because you could see if I came in and, yeah, if you could you get a better feel for the hold button, why that's so cool, right? Because it stands out if a customer's yeah. on hold. Much more than putting a field in here, hold, yes or no, right? Much better. And, and the search for it as well, if I came in and looked for Goofy, It'll yeah. it'll find that one for me as well. So um, that the the thing that probably gets me the most on this would be for me is also dealing with the form. So yeah. I have a form here that I could submit, so I could submit it to uh, SharePoint, 
And so dealing with the form is, is probably another big thing for me because one of the things that I did on the fields here, I'm pulling the customer ID and the customer name from the gallery. So I had to turn it on, I had to um, change the default field and then change the display mode. So you have mm. to think about those kinds of things because yeah. I didn't want anybody editing those fields, right? They have to be changed in, in the ERP system which really is our single source of truth. This is just so we have that SharePoint list of who did credit checks and, and mm -hmm, when. Mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. you know, probably wouldn't be a bad idea to create, uh, yeah. if you have SQL, create a SQL yeah. database for that anyhow so it stays protected as well. So that information and then uploading um, where I am now is getting where I could upload a value in. That's one of the issues that I'm, I'm running into because this is actually a number value, not a that's going into a value field inside of SQL. So that's kind of where I am there. So those are the things that kind of get me, but let me show you how, why it's not bad. It just is a little bit of a head scratcher as you put it. <laughs> and the reason for that is because we have a uh, app checker here and we have it for flow as well. Yeah. And if yeah. you come in, you could check on your app and you can get, so it's telling me, hey, look, I, I could see that. Oh, I got a delegation warning on it right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if I were to open that up, it tells me what's going well, on. Yeah, so yeah. I'm having issues with my data service. So I got to fix my data fix service. It, yeah. But um, that is, I mean, the, this formula, this app checker, and we have the same with the flow checker. Mm -hmm. Probably have yeah. Yep. Then whoop, where'd it go? You may break your power apps for your flow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And so it's just warning me here, but those kinds of things, these checkers in here, they kind of guide you. I yeah. am embarrassed to say um, last week I was struggling. Why well, couldn't get this statement to work? <laughs> <laughs> and it turned out I was like I was putting in a patch statement on something like what mm. we did right here. But instead of being on select, I was still on fill. And oh, that's why, it was, that's why yeah. I was getting an error message. Yeah. So I was up here where the fill color was, and I was putting in this patch statement, and it didn't work. It. And then finally, I'm like, okay, I'm going to the air, the app checker. And I went to the app checker, and mm -hmm. it said fill. And I'm like, fill? What? what? And then all of a sudden, it dawned on me, and I'm like, what an idiot. So, um, yes, um, we run into some of those kinds of issues too. But the, but the app checker and the, the flow checker, those are things that help citizen developers like me um, stay sane. Yeah, for, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, top of the hour, we're done. We all too soon. Uh, we've come to the end of today's session. That was an interesting, interesting, interesting session. Thank you very <laughs> much for sharing. I see myself in the back. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> so thank you so much, Belinda. Thank you for <laughs> sharing this. Um, you know, like John said, you always have a way of bringing, you know, making the tool very, you know, useful to our use cases. So really, really appreciate that. Um, oh. Well, follow her. You can see that her Twitter handle at Miss Belinda Allen. Make sure you follow her. I mean, if you have anything data related, you know, she's the, she's the one to go to, you know. <laughs> well, all too soon, we've come to the end of another episode. Uh, this was an awesome one. So... Uh, catch us again next week for another another awesome session of the power series so then as i always say be safe learn something new share let's build the community and make the world a better place with that said we are out